Okay, continuing with our week of shell basics, working in the, in this case, Linux uh, terminal, but uh, this will work uh, on a lot of other systems, uh, not Windows, I mean, unless you have uh, something like Sigwin installed, but um, basically what we've gone over this week, we'll work on like a uh, Mac OS, uh, BSD, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Linux, uh, and um, a lot of systems, uh, really pretty much anything but Windows, should have some sort of shell in it. Uh, I mean, Windows does have its own thing, but it's different than everybody else because they just got to be that way. So, um, and I figure today we can actually write a script. Um, you can use any text editor that you'd like. Make sure it's a text editor and not a word processor. Like, you don't want to be using... Uh, uh, LibreOffice or OpenOffice or Microsoft Word or something to write this out. Uh, you want to use something like Gedit or uh, Kate, I believe, is uh, KDE's. Um, but since we're working in the shell, we might as well edit in the shell. Normally, I use Vim, V-I-M, as my text editor of choice. Um, but that might be a little advanced for some people. We're going to use Nano today, which is also a little more common on like stripped down systems. Uh, it tends to be there quite often, and if not, it should be available in many cases. But use whatever text editor you feel comfortable with. I'm just going to use, once again, it's called Nano. And then I'm going to give it the name I want to call it. I'll just call it My Script. And you, this isn't necessary, but .sh indicates that it is a shell script that's just for the user it doesn't affect how it works at all uh, unlike a, a windows system where the extension what's after that last dot there tells the system what type of file it is um, in unix systems that's pretty much for uh, most part for user knowledge so i can quickly look at it and go oh that's a shell script not necessary at all i'll tell you what is necessary is once we go in here is the first line of the script is called the shebang line and it's pound exclamation mark exclamation point forward slash bin bash doesn't have to be bash unless you're using bash which is going to be very common you might see ones with other terminals on a very lightweight system it might be sh which is just a standard uh, shell um, bash is born again shell it's it's another shell and there's many out there Basically, what this is saying, because as far as the system is concerned, this is a text file. It's no different than a letter you write. It's no different than another scripting language like Python. Um, this first line tells the system this is a shell script. Now, if you leave that out and you run it in Bash or through Bash, it knows. But let's say you're running in another shell like the SH shell or Z shell or TC shell. Or T -sheet, T -sheet, yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of lot of shells out there. If you don't put this there and you try to run it and your code isn't compatible with that shell, it's not going to work. But most systems have Bash installed. It goes, okay, this is a Bash script. Use the Bash interpreter, the Bash environment. So very important, not extremely necessary in all cases, but important to put because it will cause headaches in the f later down the road if you don't. So pound exclamation mark forward slash bin forward slash bash just saying to use the bash interpreter. At this point, we just write out a list of commands. So let's go over the stuff we've learned this week. Let's first off, I like to start off most of my scripts, if not all, by clearing the screen. Makes your code look clean. And then we will ask a question. I will say echo uh, dash n. And at this point, someone's going to ask me, Oh, Nano doesn't color code on my machine. I'm not going to get into that today. Some systems, depending on how you set up, it's in the config file. Uh, uh, whether it color codes or not, you may not get colors like this um, in Nano on your system unless it's set up to, in which case, just Google color coding Nano. Uh, so, echo and uh, color coding makes it very uh, makes it a lot better for noticing mistakes in your code. So echo dash n and I'll say uh, what is your name? Going back to our first tutorial here. Uh, actually I'm not gonna I'm gonna put the name on a new line there. Unless I put it it all depends on how you want it to look. I'm gonna put the 
no new line. I'm going to say enter your name and then put a colon there with a space. That looks like like it's wanting you to put it at the end of the line there. So clear the screen, print echo, enter your name, and then we're going to say read. Remember this waits for a user input and we'll create a variable called name and that variable will be whatever the user inputs. And then we will clear the screen again and then we will s echo out hello name and don't forget your dollar sign that way it knows to use the variable and not just the word name hello name echo and uh, what should we do next we will say um, oh here we go um, uh, what is your favorite color what is your favorite color question mark and I like to capitalize random words don't ask me why so what is your favorite color and then here I'll say read and I'll create a variable called color and now I will echo out echo dollar sign color and this is case sensitive don't put a capital C there if you did not put a capital C when you created the variable. So echo color is a good color. I also know there's different ways to spell color. That's how I spell it. And there's not a right way and a wrong way. There's just different ways to spell color before someone uh, <laughs> comments on that. I don't know if it's airy, live, part of the world, part of country, whatever. But echo color is a good color. So it's not going to say color is a good color. It's going to say whatever color the user inputted. Inputted? Input. Inputted. Yeah. So, and then we will say echo. Now saving that info. And then we can say echo dollar sign name uh, name favorite color is and then we'll say dollar sign color but we're not going to print that out to the screen we're going to put that into a file called color dot log and then we will clear the screen again. Well, I don't want to clear the screen at this point uh, because it will go so fast you won't see any of that stuff. So I will say, um, actually I'll clear the screen up here. I just like to clear the screen because it keeps things looking fresh. So now we'll say um, echo data saved echo please always be nice say please press enter to continue and then we'll just give it the read command without a variable and it will just wait for the user to hit enter and then we will clear the screen and then we will say that's the end of our script <laughs> Uh, well, maybe we should have some sort of exit message. Uh, echo, have a good day, dollar sign name. And then um, we're going to hit uh, control X to exit. Y to yes, save. And it says you want to write to this file, myscript.sh, enter. Now we have that all in that script. Now there's two ways you can run this. We can say bash and then the name of the script. It's not the best way to do it in my opinion. Uh, what you should do is change mod to make it executable. So change mod plus x the name of your script. What that is doing is saying to the system this is a script and I as the user am giving this script permission to run because otherwise it would not work. You try to run it and it just would not execute. It would give you an error message of some sort. But now that it's executable, we can run it. 
by giving it, since it's in the folder we're in, we're going to say dot forward slash, dot slash, my script. And when we hit enter, it starts. It says, enter your name. My name is Chris. We'll hit enter. It says, hello, Chris. What is your favorite color? I'll say blue. I actually really like black, but black is not really a color. So we'll say blue. We will hit enter. It says blue is a good color. Now saving that info. Data saved, because it was just a little bit of data, only took a fraction of a second. Please press enter to continue. We could also have wrote exit, because that's the end of our script. It says have a good day, Chris. So, and if we go back to a little review here, ls, you can see all the files in this folder. And there is one called color log. And if we cat that out, it says, Chris, favorite color is blue. So let's go back into Nano. I'm hitting up arrow to go through my history. And let's quickly review our shebang line. Very important saying that this is a script. And what type of script it is, it is a bash script. We're going to say clear the screen, echo and don't put a new line at the end of this and then wait for the user input and then save that input as the variable name clear the screen oh, I did that last time too. clear the screen and then echo hello whatever the person inputted uh, echo what is your favorite color save the user input as the variable color clear the screen use the variable color is a good color now saving that info and then it's taking the variable of the name and the variable of the color putting it in a sentence and appending it to this color log file. So if we run the script again, it will actually add it as a new line to that file. And I'll show you that here in a second. Then we have a few more messages. We're using the read command without a variable just to wait for the user to press enter, clearing the screen and having an exit message. So real quick, control X to exit out of that if you're using nano. Once again, it's already executable. We made it executable with change mod, so we don't have to do that again. But I'm going to say dot slash tab to autocomplete here. And I'm going to hit enter to run it again. What's your name? I'll just say James. And it says, hello, James. What is your favorite color? And I'll say James's favorite color is red. I will hit enter. It says red is a good color. Now saving that info. At that point, it saves it. Data saved. Please press enter to continue, and it says, have a good day, James. So now uh, I can cat out our color log file. And since we appended by using the greater than, greater than, rather than just one gate greater than, it will add it to our last uh, line. So both lines should be in there now. Cat, color.log, and we've got Chris, favorite color is blue. James, favorite color is red. Really probably should put a comma there or something or apostrophe S, but you get the idea. So I hope you enjoyed this week of review on basics in the shell, basics in the terminal. Once again, I have plenty of tutorials. If you want more, go to my website. If you want me to do more um, on the basics of the terminal shell, because I've been getting into a lot more advanced stuff recently, if you want me to do a lot on basics. I can go back and do more videos on basic stuff like this. Um, the way you let me know, uh, go ahead and comment, but also give this video a thumbs up. You know, that's the way voting, you know, all, all the videos in this series. If I get a lot of thumbs up, people liking it, I know that I should do more videos on the basics. If not, I'll just continue doing more advanced stuff and you can watch the old lower quality basics uh, that I've done. But I probably would like to do more tutorials on uh, on grep and cut and sed and awk, which is uh, more intermediate stuff, I guess. Um, but my old videos on that stuff is um, rather low quality, um, but they're doable. So I, it's like, should I redo them? Do you guys not care? Are the old ones good enough? Let me know by liking this video. Also, if you enjoy this video, if you're new to this, be sure to check out my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description of this video. Um, uh, and I have plenty of videos there. I've been doing this for a couple of years now. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, subscribe. I put out videos regularly. Check out this whole playlist of uh, Shell Basics. There should be an annotation or something in the uh, video description linking you to the entire playlist. Um, and I just thank you for watching. I hope that you have a great day.